In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about inheritance by looking at something called the inheritance chain. And this is where we have a class that inherits from a class that also inherits from a class. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to create a square class that inherits from our rectangle class that we created earlier, which, as you know, inherits from the shape class. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is copy our rectangle program to a new program called Square. Next, let's open the Square program. Scroll down to right before the working code, right after the rectangle definition. And let's begin our definition of Square. So here we indicate that the class Square inherits from the rectangle class. Now we can write our initialization method. The way we differentiate a square from a rectangle is that a square has equal sides. So what we want to check to see when we're creating a new square object is that the width and the height are the same. If they're not, what we'll do is we'll just assign the height of an object to the width. So watch how we do that. Just like so. After that, we can just call the constructor or the initialize method for the rectangle class by calling super with our parameters. And that's all we need to do to initialize a square. Next, let's create a toString method that displays the same data the rectangle toString method displays, but just to differentiate it a little bit, we'll have a little heading that says square before the xy coordinates and the height and the width. So all we have to do is type print square and then print super to get our toString method. That ends the definition of square, so let's go down to our working code and let's create a square object. And then we'll write out its state with two string. So let's save this and run it and see what we get. So there's our square with a height and width of 4 and located at xy712. Now let's create a square object that doesn't have the same width and height. And let's see how the program handles that. So you see it adjusted for the fact that the width and the height were not the same by making them equal, which is just an arbitrary decision. In a program, say with the user interface, we could have prompted the user again to enter the correct value. But here we're just making an arbitrary decision to make the height and width equal since they have to be for the shape to be a square. So there's our code. Not too difficult, but it does demonstrate nicely how the inheritance chain works so that we can have very complex hierarchies of objects when we need to. Although I caution you not to make them too complex because it becomes harder and harder to keep everything straight. And some people question even the efficiency of programs that have very complex inheritance chains. But for something like shape to rectangle to square, that's not overly complex. And it perfectly models the relationship these shapes have with each other. So that wraps up this lesson on the inheritance chain. And we're ready to move on to the exercises for this chapter.